swoops on the crowd. A massive basket. Three, you are kidding me. And the fire burn brightest. Townsville are WNBL champions for the fourth time. Signet WNBL season heads to Mildura for Friday Night Hoops as Bendigo and Sydney battle it out as they each search for their first win of the new season. The Spirit are coming off a 13-point loss to Townsville in round one while the Flames went down to Perth by 14 on the road. To set us up for an entertaining duel this evening, Jess Webster with you in commentary alongside Basketball Australia Hall of Fame member Carrie Graff. Great to have you here, Carrie, for what should be a really good contest between these two sides. Yeah, it should, Jess. Both teams searching for their first win of... WNBL season 23-24. Both teams a little rusty, a little, you know, finding their way in, in round one, particularly um, the Sydney Flames. Eight new players on their roster, new coach. Kayla George, last year's MVP, had one practice session before game one, coming back from the WNBA championship with the Aces. So they're going to take a little while to get going. Bendigo, on the other hand, same coach, core group, but both teams are, are lacking some star talent. Kelsey Griffin is on a return to play. Um program. She warmed up with the team tonight but she won't hit the court. They're planning that she'll return in round three. We see the starting the starting five there for the Bendigo Spirit. Ali Wilson, Kelly Wilson in the guard spots with Abby Wehrung, uh Ruth Davis in the in the post position and Krakow uh, playing for them on the on the perimeter. Um, you know, I think this team will be, for them it'll be about can they um, not turn the ball over and control momentum. They had 21 turnovers in round one and that gave that gave their opposition 30-plus points. So that would be a real focus for them. Look after the ball tonight and control tempo. Yeah, they certainly had their moments, didn't they, against Townsville. Just couldn't go the distance. And like you said, perhaps their own worst enemy at times as we switch our attention to Sydney. As we mentioned, uh, they also suffered a loss in round one. So much excitement about the roster that they've put together this season. And like you touched on before, a lot of sides, it'll probably take some time for them to gel and find their best combination. And tonight, we're seeing a, a change to their starting five. Yeah, Emma Clark into the starting starting lineup tonight with Sydney alongside Lauren Nicholson, star player for them, premier player in the league over the last four or five seasons. Kayla George, we mentioned, um, is there as the MVP who, you know, this team didn't shoot the ball well at all against Perth. They'll they'll be feeling much better get round two, having shot the ball a bit more. Um, Paige Bradley there in the in the starting lineup. Dee Dee Richards, it'll be interesting to see her in, in game two. Coming off, you know, she she's been injured the last few years, carrying a bit of hamstring out of the WNBA. But, um, you know, she's, she can have an impact for them on the boards. So we're almost set to go at the Mildura Sporting Precinct. Great to have WNBL, uh, the competition, up there in Mildura this afternoon or this evening. And uh, don't forget, the official WNBL app is finally here. We don't want you to miss a minute of the action. So for all of your live scores, highlights, and all your player and team info and more, download the free WNBL app today. I've certainly got it at the ready. Carry ready for this contest tonight. So what do we expect out of this? Uh, I was mentioned both sides looking to rebound, um, but what do you think will be the coach's focus tonight? Yeah, certainly for Sydney, you know, Coach Guy Malloy is all about putting in his offensive and de defensive systems. He knows his team won't, won't have gelled for the first few weeks, and, and as we know, you know, and he said today, you know, you don't win championships in November in the WNBL. He knows it'll take him a little while to get going. He's excited about his group, but their focus tonight will be very much on them. Can they play physical defence? Can they, can they have composure and move the ball offensively? They want to score, it, even though we know, look, key scorers for them are absolutely going to be Kayla George and Lauren Nicholson, but can they score by committee a little bit? They need contributions from others. On the other side of the coin, Bendigo Spirit is certainly a team that are going to try and score by committee. They did that last last week. They had five scorers in, in double digits. That'll be similar for them tonight, particularly without Kelsey Griffin, Griffin who we know is a, a great scorer. Um, you know, this is going to be interesting. Who can look after the ball? Who can move the ball? Who can play physical defence? How are the referees going to call it early? Um, it's, it's going to be really interesting. Some of the some of the matchups will be super interesting too. The matchup between Ruth Davis and, and Kayla George will be one to watch. Um, there's no way Kayla George will be shooting in the low 20s from the field mm. tonight. Absolutely, and so much to look forward to tonight. Bendigo, they also currently hold a four-game winning streak against Sydney. Do you see that changing tonight? Look, it could well, and, and I think those streaks, you know, this is a much different Sydney lineup. It's a, it's a different coach, different systems, different teams. Um, you know, I think some of those previous stats have gone out the window. Bendigo, I'd say, you know, you probably lose a little bit of home court advantage. Yes, you're in regional Victoria, but it's not your home court. 
you would assume that the regional Victoria fans are going to uh, barrack for the Victorian based team, but who knows? Oh, with Kayla George on the other side, there might be a few free fans going for the league MVPs that were underway Friday night hoops in Mildura, and it's going to be Bendigo with their first opportunity. They move it forward. We're on getting involved early. Back to Wilson. For the three to kick us off. Can't get it to drop. Nice Sydney. early little ball movement. Some ball screen action up high there. Ali Wilson and Ruth Davies see if they can test out what, the, what ball screen defense. Sydney Flames are looking to run as George launches the three early. Mm -hmm. Over a hand. Doesn't drop for her. Looking for an early confidence boost. Couldn't quite get that one on target. So Bendigo down the other end. Here is Krakow, one of their recruits this season. So back from the deflection, swings it across to Wilson. Wide open for the three. Good ball movement then. Nice skip pass. Saw Ali Wilson wide open on the three-point line. That's a great shot for her. There is Richards driving. And I'll head to the line. Good job by Richards there. Saw, saw the open lane, went downhill. Finds herself at the free throw line. She's had injury plague the last sort of 18 months. Got waived by the New York Liberty in the WNBA, coached by Australian Opals coach Sandy Brondello. Um, but she certainly rates her highly and, and feels that she can have an impact in this league as a, you know, a, a rebounder, gets after it, aggressive defender. Eight points and four rebounds last week against Perth for Dee Dee Richards and just one from two here on the free throw line. And... Kraka, who had a, a team high 16 points last week against Townsville. Great start to her time at Bendigo. Here's Nicholson to George. Back to Nicholson under a bit of pressure. Trying to find some room and does it all herself. Just can't have the finish. Bendigo has added a legitimate centre to their roster this year in Ruth Davies. They felt that that was a, a missing piece for them. You know, the top four teams all had true centre players at 6'4", 6'5"-ish. They've added her. She played in the league previously. As Ruth Hamblin, her, her pre-married name, um, had a stint with the Perth Lynx and a stint with Adelaide, and she's back in the league and certainly improved her game after a few seasons in Europe. Now has so much experience under her belt as well. It's going to be a... Hopefully a, uh, a really valuable pickup for Bendigo as George has travelled. So the Spirit will, will, will regain possession. She's brought that back from the WNBA, perhaps. Cracker working on Richards. And again, is offline. So a couple of opportunities gone begging for both sides early. George. Not on this occasion. Yeah, Bendigo just, ball. As you say, just neither team can find the bottom of the basket right now. Getting getting good looks, getting good open shots. Only score so far as a free throw from Dee Dee Richards. Down the other end, Wilson. Looking for an option. Good ball. Werung in the corner. Yes, that's great. Excellent ball movement by the Bendigo Spirit. Swing the ball, kick the ball. Corner, wide open three. Some great ball movement. You know she loves it from Whoa. outside the arc. Wearing is Richards. That was another superb move. Now we're starting to get a bit of energy. Yeah, I was going to say that almost looked like a travel. Kayla George got called for one earlier. Let's have a look at it on the replay. One, two. Ooh. Um. And that might have been might have been a travel. Got out of jail. She'll take the <laughs> basket and one. This time makes no mistake. Give Sydney Flames a little lead. 4-3. Two Wilsons combined. Cracker swings it across to Ali Wilson. Looking inside for Davis. And as we mentioned, coming into the starting five tonight for Bendigo. So a little bit of a mix up in tactics there for the spirit they're both you know a few of the teams early both with some injuries looking at different matchups and different lineups against different opponents happy to change the starting lineups as we see bendigo with the steal on the break back to wilson and finishes it 
Wonderful team play there from the Spirit. Now the points are starting to flow. Nicholson. Again, one of, one of a number of star recruits for the Flames this year to Bradley. So personal against Ali Wilson. And again, the Flames are going to go to the line. Or is it going to be from uh, the side? Base out of bounds. I oh, no, side ball. No, nope, base out of bounds. So they can reload George. Cross to Nicholson. Back to George. We should go for it. She steps inside looking for Richards. Bounces off the rim. Felt she was mismatched there, Richard. She had Kelly Wilson on her back. Couldn't make the little inside turnaround jumper. And Richards gets a hand in there. Down the other end. Can she convert? Yes. Great finish. Got in the lane there. Used her length and her quicks. So we need, need to help the scoreboard tick along. Can you come up with a steal? She created a fast break for herself. Davis, George, just knocked it away from her. Gets it back to Kraka. Play it around the arc. Goes for the three again, does Werong. This time couldn't convert. Davis, though. Big on the offensive board, but just as big on the block. It's none other than Kayla George does that so well. Bradley. Gets a good look. Bobbles out. Seeing a lot of ball screen, elbow ball screen action from both teams early. Bendigo pick up the foul. So just a one point lead to the Flames. Early stages, first quarter here in Mildura as we take a, another look at that incident. Ali Wilson just thought she'd put her head down, get downhill. Drew the foul, used her quicks. She'll reset from the side. Casey Samuels in for the Bendigo Spirit. See what she can manufacture here. Drew some contact. So the Clark going against the Clark, the foul going against Emma Clark. We're all a bit rusty in round two, aren't we, Carrie? We are. Just like the athletes and the coaches <laughs> for the commentary team too. It takes a little while to get back in the seat. It's great to have the Signet WNBL back. Good look for three. Can't get it to drop. Back out to Wilson. Now to Froling who's into the action. Samuels gets an early look. Can't find her first points. And now... Sydney down the other end through Bradley, makes a move. And that's great defense from Bendigo. Yeah, excellent position. Both teams just struggling to score, shooting under 25% from the field. Werong shares it with Kelly Wilson. To Ali Wilson, back to Kelly. Sharing it around, trying to find the best option of the Spirit. Looking for Samuels, and they've turned it over. Flames. Work it down the other end to Bradley. Has Richards in support. Will go to her. And now Nicholson. Long range, two, and converts. Signature move for, for Nicholson. She's great on that left, left hand pull up jumper, particular for ball screen. She's tough to defend in that scenario. Wurong tried to kick it back out, but has turned it over straight to George. Passes to Bradley, and they make them pay down the other end. Can't make sh shots in your half-court offense. Your defense can help if you can get out and do that, create steals, get out on the break, create numbers advantages, two-on-ones, three-on-twos. Now Sydney skip out to a five-point lead. Less than four to play in the first quarter. It'd be something that the Spirit will want to work on from round one, Carrie, is 
They mashed it with Townsville in patches, but just couldn't quite put together a four-quarter performance. As we know, it's round one, and everyone's trying to blow out the cobwebs, but certainly something they'll be looking to address this week. Yeah, absolutely. How do, how do they control momentum? You know, when, when a team makes a run, what can they do? Can they shift something defensively? Can they guarantee they get a great shot? It's that, you know, Flames have gone on a little run here, five-point buffer, really critical possession here for, for Benigo. Can they convert or get a great shot critically? They scored the first nine points against Townsville last week. Then they hit back with the next 19. So it was a pretty wild momentum swing to start the contest. And they are through Froling. Gets that one to drop. Great composure by Froling. Then just got her balance, muscled her way up to finish that bucket. Penusis into the action for Sydney. And so is Rowe. Clark has turned it over. Now Wilson. Racing down the other end of the court and Crocker for a three and couldn't convert. Nicholson mops it up for Sydney. Right shot to take, wide open three, first eight seconds of the shot clock. Pace, pushing tempo. Just can't get the shots to drop right now, the Bendigo spirit. Great hustle from both teams. Such desperation here. Of course, both sides looking for their first win of the new season. Big opportunity tonight in Mildura. And you can see the intent right there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, certainly Coach Guy Malloy talked about his team, you know, early on to see if they can play physical physical defence. We're seeing that, seeing that here. And as you say, both teams with some desperation, feeling, you know, a little tight. Shots aren't, aren't dropping. Baskets aren't easy to come by. But they can get after possession. They can get after loose ball. And both teams certainly have the right endeavour. So a couple of changes to both teams out there. Hurst into the action for the Flames. So to McSpadden and a travel called against Panusis, I think that was. Referees are looking for that one. They're on to that tonight, aren't they? Kayla Francis got a travel call early. We saw it. Uh, Kayla George, apologies. Her maiden name from many, many years ago. <laughs> um, and we saw Panusis then called ping for the, for the travel as well. Referees are deeming that their, their back foot's leaving the floor before they get the ball down on little show-and-go moves. Two and a half to go in this first quarter. Flames currently up by three. Spirit with possession. Low scoring affair. Both teams not shooting well from the field at this point in the game, but Froling likes the same move, muscles her way down and gets a left-hand finish again. Impact off the bench, Alicia Froling. She's going to head to the line too as well, I think. So important to the spirit side. 15 points last week against Townsville and five rebounds as well. Resigned on a two-year deal as well. Interestingly, she's a right-hander. She had a major wrist injury for, for quite a few years. She spent a whole season and converted to shooting a left-hand free throw, as we saw there. It didn't go down, but... If you didn't know she wasn't a left-hander, that left-hand free throw is looking pretty good. How are you at both both hands, Carrie? I was actually a two-handed three-point shooter okay. way back in the day in the in the in the eighties. I used to get uh, yeah, people used to suggest that I shot like uh, had an Asian technique to my three-point shot when I got on the floor for my you know rare roll minutes. I was no good at either, so. Speaking of free throw shooters, Lauren Nicholson is an exceptional free throw shooter. Great technique. Yeah, went at 81% at the free throw line last season. Yeah, that's elite. You know, if, you can, if you're shooting over 80%, averaging over 80% from the free throw, that's elite. The best of the best, high 80s, nudging into the 90s. Goldrick to restart proceedings for the spirit. Cracker to Samuels. Little pick the picker action here from Bendigo Spirit, really grinding some old school offense. Ali Wilson, can she manufacture a nice pass inside for Froling? Gets the foul. Big impact for the Bendigo Spirit right now. It's Alicia Froling, they go out of, go to the well until the well runs dry. Didn't finish on her right hand that time. Maybe she could, should have gone back to her left, but Great aggressive move, rolled to the rim, received the pass. We see her back at the free throw line. Four points already in this opening term for Alicia Froling. 
has a chance to add some more to a tally. Makes a nice adjustment. A free throw earlier was short. Great shooters don't miss the same way twice in a row. You see they make the adjustment, shoot it longer. Makes two of two. Alicia Froling, big impact. So less than two minutes to go. Opening quarter here in Mildura. Penusa shares it with Clark. Clark will get it back. Has a good look for three. And bounces off the rim. Samuels take it down the other end. Ali Wilson back to Samuels. And now Kraka kicks it out. A little bit of a fumble. They're under pressure now as a shot clock down to five for a big three from Kraka. Went for it. Could have come up with the points on that occasion. That was almost over the South Australian border. She was <laughs> downtown in Muldura. Panousis. Rowe wide open for the three. Both teams struggling to hit, hit from the three-point line. They're getting good looks on the perimeter as we see. Crow up. Goes downhill, gets to the rim, gets herself a pair of free throws. It's been a good few minutes from Bendigo. Flames at one stage are up by five, but a, a good little patch for the Spirit. And they look like they're settling into this contest nicely. From Milwaukee and Wisconsin is Marin Krakup. As we mentioned earlier, a team high 16 points for Townsville last week in a debut game in the WNBL and also a member of their leadership group as well. And we're all tied up with less than a minute to go here. Get an arm wrestle of an opening quarter. Two sides trying to get on the winner's list for the first time as Clark makes a move. Hesitates, couldn't get that left hand to go. Kraka has a second opportunity. Can't convert again. We'll get it back again. Wow, she's bringing the energy for the Bendigo spirit. Her endeavor's great. Couldn't get the conversion after that great offensive rebound. Samuels has coughed it up. Nowhere to go there for Samuels. A few crossovers, but she had someone occupying the low post. Maybe the play is to throw that into Alicia Froling. She's made something happen in the last three post touches she's had. 2.4 seconds left on the clock. Bendigo ball. Froling puts a shot up. Coach will be happy with that execution. They got it to a person with a hot hand on the rim. So that'll do us to quarter time in Mildura and we are all square. It is Bendigo 12, the Flames at 12 and we're going to take a short break and be back with the second quarter shortly. Buying a car should feel like a win. That you've got the best deal and a great car. Like the award-winning Ford Everest. With seven seats, plenty of space, and towing capacity of three and a half tonnes, it's perfect for those big family adventures. No wonder it won Wheels Car of the Year. With so many awards across the Ford range, you'll feel like a winner at your Ford dealer.
Welcome back to the Mildura Sporting Precinct. Round two of the Signet WNBL season. And it was a great start to this contest between Bendigo and Sydney. We're all square at quarter time, 12 each. Jess Webster and Carrie Graff with you in commentary this evening. And Carrie, what did you make of that opening term? Yeah, look, it was a bit of a grind. It wasn't It wasn't super pretty. Both teams feeling each other out a, a little bit. I thought the endeavour was good. The intensity was good. They just struggled to hit perimeter shots. Offence got bog, bogged down a little bit at times. But, you know, the defensive energy from Sydney got them a little spurt, got out on the break a little bit. But Alicia Froling had a real impact in those last, you know, three or four minutes. Went down low, went inside, found conversions. Um, you know, but, but both teams, you know, the shooting percentages at the moment are pretty... Pretty low from both, but both both coaches will be reasonably happy. I mean, this is a low-scoring affair, 12 points in a quarter. Mm. Round one, we saw some teams scoring close to 30 in the first quarter. So, you know, this is going to be a bit of a half-court grind, I think. So six points for Alicia Frolling in that opening quarter. And Richards as well. The six for Sydney for her side. The two key scorers to this point of the game. Dee Dee Richards gets called for a personal there, referees. Calling it pretty tight, pretty early. Not allowing it to get too physical. Little cross-screen action. Screen the screener action here from Bendigo Spirit. Doing mid-pick and roll. And we're on looking for the pass. Execution a little off as we welcome our nine now viewers to the coverage. Apologies for the technical difficulties experienced uh, in the first quarter, but great to have your company wherever you're watching. And well, they've turned it straight over to George. Well defended Sydney Flames. Took away some of the actions there. Challenged a five second inbound call and then forced a turnover from that base out of bounds play. Coach Guy Malloy will be happy with that. How do you see Kayla George's role that she's going to play for Sydney uh, this season? Of course, we know what a superstar she is, but how do you think she'll be deployed for the Flames this, this season? Yeah, look, she'll be one of their key. I mean, she's one of their, their big three. Obviously, Tess Madgen, Opal's captain from the World Championship, is out injured. She's likely to return to play end of November, December. But, you know, Nicholson, um, George and, uh, and Madgen, certainly a big three, and then you add their, add their imports. But... You know, she's going to have to carry a big load for them, particularly as a scorer. As Clark gets her first three of the evening from the corner. Flames skip, skip out to a three-point advantage. Ball screen action there with a nice roll down by Davis. They're clearly looking, trying to get her to roll to the rim. Can they go inside? The interior play by Froling has set a good standard there. Can they get some of that going for, for Davis? Get her close to the rim. She's a legit center, 6'5". Here's Wilson. And now Werong. Goes at Richards, can't sucker the foul. Sydney Flames there switching on that ball screen defensively. It's been a whistle on play. Might be a shot clock. The referees might be discussing shot clock. The shot clock may have not been reset, it looks like. It's sitting there at 24. There'd been three or four dribbles. They might call that down to 20 or 21 seconds. 21 it is. And we're back underway. Kayla George to Bradley who fires. He's offline. Wide open from the three-point line off a little handoff there. Sydney Flames having to run people off some very screen actions, cross screens, diagonal up screens. Can't get that perimeter shot to drop. Ali Wilson to Kelly. Wide open for the three. Can't take her opportunity. Most capped player in the in the WNBL, Kelly Wilson. Over 400 games. Just an incredible in her 21st WNBL season. In great condition. You know, she's come back from the birth of a child. She's a three-time WNBL championship player. Great assists. She's third all-time in assists in the WNBL of all time. And, and said pre-season that She's come back to Bendigo. Feels like she has unfinished business in her 21st season. Unfinished business trying to get the spirit back into finals. 
Here she is with ball in hand at the moment. Great basketball like you knows who to get who to get the ball to. Great passer. Shoot the three-point shot well. Here she is, right on cue, and nails it. Made the adjustment the up. She didn't like the look of the previous one. That one was dead straight. Richards down the other end. Back out to Bradley. Swings it across to Clark. Baseline move. Nicely done. Nice composure there, and Clark gives a little shimmy shake, finds herself on the rim, converts well for the Sydney Flames. Seesawing affair that this is. Low scoring affair so far. Crocker from out wide, couldn't convert. Richards does it all herself. Yeah, she'll get better. Better as, the, as she, you know, she plays more in this league. It often takes, you know, most international players that haven't played in the WNBL before, when they go to any competition around the world, just to, it takes a little while to get get used to the, you know, a new new players, new group. Davis down low takes her time, wheels and deals against Kayla Francis. Can't get that one to drop. And for the international players that that come here, Carrie, what is it about this competition that? is so valuable to their development or or in helping them reach their goals, whatever that may, that may be? Yeah, look, I think it, you know, it varies from play to play, but certainly it's an opportunity for players that play um, in Europe when they come, they take a, a season out of Europe and come to Australia. That you know, they, there's less there's less games in intensity. It's almost like they can they can recover a little bit, work on their game, come to a country, an English speaking country, come to Australia. It's almost I won't say it's a working holiday, but it's much different to the grind of a an eight an eight month season, say in France or Poland. Um, you know, and the quality of the players in this league. You know, we get high quality WNBA players, or we get up and coming WNBA players. They know that the, the Australian players like Kayla George are, you know, coming out of a WNBA championship team. So, you know, the WNBL is certainly um, renowned around um, around the globe to have, you know, quality coaching. We've got great um, sports science and small sports medicine wrapped around our, our semi-professional teams. Um, you know, it's it's well regarded by most international players. Yeah, absolutely. And I imagine the lifestyle as well. We're a little bit more slower paced here in Australia. So it might be kind of great for them to relax, you know, when it comes to their basketball, if they're uh, enjoying the Aussie lifestyle as well. Yeah, although having said that, you know, the travel schedule for the WNBL is is pretty hectic. Well, you know, they, that they is got true. a Wednesday game Sunday. They, you're flying from Townsville to Perth to wherever. But, but certainly, you know, you're here in summer. You know, you're not in a European um, winter. So there are some are some benefits in your little bit of downtime that you get as a as a professional athlete. Particularly tonight, getting a, a little taste of Mildura as well up there, in Northwest Victoria. Great to have the competition up there. Crocker in the corner, looking for Davis. Clark knocked away from her. Coach Guymala will be happy with the intensity of the defense, particularly on the interior. Then make it tough for Davis to get a, a catch close to the rim, finding some deflections. Spoke about him wanting his team to be much more physical defensively. So the Flames are taking control of this second quarter. They're out to a six-point advantage as Bradley all alone. Just couldn't get it to rattle in and down the other end. Referee's found a foul somewhere in the keyway there. Looks like it. Thought we were going to see another travel for a second. <laughs> a few of those tonight, but looks like it is a foul. Maybe it was on a body check as Alicia Froling tried to cut to the rim there. She grimaced a little, might have taken a hard hit. Referee's calling everything at the moment. So it's a third personal foul now for Emma Clark. Let's see if Coach Malloy leaves her out there. You may trust that she can sit on three fouls okay. Crocker. And that's a travel. Right, the referees are that's, I think certainly the third looking one. at that. Third uh, one for tonight, I think. It is all on show and go moves. Just has a bit of a laugh. I'm sure the coaches that will be bench. cutting up those tapes and sending it to the the referee, the referee oh, coach to say, can we look at these please? Bradley moves it up the floor for the Flames. Six point advantage. Pass looking for McSpadden. And now maintain possession. We see the Bendigo spirit 
defence all there. Th three players collapsing in that, that rim roll. Dug the ball out of there. Following their defensive systems to get coverage on the roller. A little rescreen there by Lauren Nicholson on that base out of bounds play. Well defended by Cracker. Great defense. McSpadden gets it away to Nicholson. Blocking foul. Right call by the referee. Wow, what a physical little bit of play that was between Nicholson and Cracker. Looks like she might have taken a hit to the nose. Welcome to the WNBL. Oh, yeah, she caught the elbow on the swing through. Looks like she's back to her feet and will come off and just get checked out. <laughs> she might have caught on the, the P8. They breathe them tough in Wisconsin. They sure do. So we see Kelsey Griffin on the bench there. Spoke about it in the opener. She warmed up with the team tonight. Her return to, return to play plan is that she'll be on court in round three for the Bendigo Spirit. Just making sure they're managing her ongoing minor hamstring injury. What a big boost that's going to be for Bendigo in the next few weeks. Yeah, massive. Her, her leadership, her ability to rebound, and, and a great connection with good mate Kelly Wilson. You know, they play exceptionally well together, and she just, you know, she brings that extra level of intensity and desire to win. So timeout called. This timeout is brought to you by Signet, Australia's number one digital accessories brand. Signet continues to power the WNBL, Australian owned and designed. Signet is available at JD Hi-Fi, Officeworks and other leading retailers. Visit signet.com. So the Flames out to a game high eight point lead timeout in the second quarter. And they've uh, certainly got the game on their terms at the moment, Carrie. Yeah, that they have, you know, good time out there by coach Kennedy, Kariyama, um, you know, he, know he, he spoke about this in, in round one and you, you spoke about it just that their, you know, their, their inability to manage runs and they've really got to do that. He called a timeout here to try and stem the flow and stop the momentum. He might make an adjustment here. Can they do something different defensively to just shake it up a little bit? What do they need offensively? You know, is it Alicia Froling injected back into the game, get her back in some, in some two games into ball screen where they can rim roll her or run off a pick and get her into the low post? But... Um, you know, maybe that's what they look to do here coming out of this timeout offensively. They try and get that into Froling on that left side of the basket where she scored so effectively and had impact for them in that first quarter. Sydney, on the other hand, Coach Guy Miller will be happy with their, their last few minutes finding it, you know, executing. We saw them running off a few more picks, a bit more movement offensively for some switches. So Froling still on the six points, all scored in the first quarter for Bendigo. Wilson, that's Kelly up to five and for Sydney, Richards and Nicholson up to eight each. With Goldrick involved to Ali Wilson. Now out to Werung. Shot a great three-pointer in that opening quarter. So good from that range. And she'll go for it again. Couldn't quite find the bottom of the net. Yeah, hoping Alicia Froling could get a put back for her, but she was well blocked out. Rowe bounces off the rim. Bendigo ball. Bendigo tempo push here. Can they create something early? Less than five minutes to go in the second quarter. Wilson from long range. Same spot. She's one of three from that spot. That left, left 45. Three point line. Kelly Wilson would have been huge for her team. Bradley. McSpadden on the rim roll. She's got a mismatch down low. They go to her. Can she convert? Yes. Well executed, go to the mismatch. Mouse in the house, McSpadden did a great job. Fast transition down the other end for the Spirit and Froling's drawn another foul. Yeah, super. We talked about it coming out of the timeout. She was the, she was the momentum swinger in that first quarter. We see her then hard on the rim on that left hand. Suck at the foul from Kayla George. It's the fifth foul on Froling as well, I think, tonight. Yeah, she's done a super job extracting physicality out of the defender and finding a way to finish. Couldn't get the first end of that free throw. Or the second. 
Vart should get a third attempt. Referees have deemed that the rebounders broke the line too early. Zero from three. Ouch. She might be happy with that, Alicia Froling, but she's got a second bite here. Mismatch. Couldn't get the ball into her, but they're going back to her this time on the left drive. So it's a, a Bendigo ball. Kayla George not happy. Letting the referees know what she thought about that call. But then she'll put a smile on her face. Play the next play. So another opportunity to the spirit. That leads now out to 10. They really need a response here, Bendigo. Yeah, you can sense they're getting a little tight offensively. You know, they feel they've really got to score here. 10 down. They don't oh, want to tighten up. And they've turned it over. Sydney make them pay down the other end. They've turned it over. McGoldrick getting a hand in there, breaking it up. Samuels now off to Ali Wilson, looking for Froling inside. Multiple defenders to beat. She draws she the contact. Draws another one. We saw then Sydney sent two, two defenders at her, make it more difficult. Great composure. Referees are deeming they came over the back. So can she readjust here? It's her last three free throws. Two or five from the three free throw line. That's better. She shot, she shot her first two, Sigh I think, relief. and then yeah, missed her next three. That one rattles out. Big stop here. And they string a couple of stops together, the Bendigo Spirit. Three minutes to go in this second quarter. Caduceus. Down nine. Ouch. That really does hurt. Multiple chances at one end for Bendigo. And straight down the other end through Panousis, the Flames extend their lead. McGoldrick. Big play. Can she go to line and convert it with the end one? Her first points of the match, and she's heading to the line. Went aggressive to the to the rim. Nice feed down to her on the low post. A rising star in New Zealand is Ezra McGoldrick. Both of these coaches coach the New Zealand national team. They know all the talent that's in New Zealand. Panousis, happy to organise it here for Sydney, knowing they've got a nice little 10 point buffer here. Can they execute, use clock, make sure they get a great shot. Ball in Nicholson's hands. Back out to Panousis. The top of the arc. Tries to feed it to McSpadden, but, and she draws some contact. Right idea again, McSpadden, you know, getting in the ball screen, McSpadden setting a great pick. Panousis uses it, wait for the, waits for the rim roll, lobs it up to her. Alicia Froling felt that that perhaps wasn't a foul, that McFadden had, McSpadden, apologies, had slipped. Here she is, ball in hand, looking for Nicholson. That's a great shot. Can't give her any room, Nicholson, when she gets her eye in, she's deadly. Wilson to Samuels. Bendigo need a response, an important two minutes for them as we head towards halftime. Wereung under pressure. Samuels inside to Froling. Can't convert, we'll get it back again. And this time she does. Great job, Alicia Froling. That time they forced the switch. Sydney's smaller players on the rotations had to try and absorb that rim roll of Froling's. Oh, weren't big enough and she converts. Panousis will get it back, swinging across to Richards. And now Nicholson starting to work her way into this contest. Another long range two pulls up short, but they win it back through McSpadden. She has a go and can't convert. Richards, another attempt to Panousis to finish it off. Great persistence on the offensive boards then by the Sydney Flames team. They had some good looks, stayed with it. 13 points now the margin. Just over a minute left in this second quarter. Froling's lost it. 
Rowling turns a the corner there, decoys the dribble handoff. Again, been exceptionally strong on her left hand. Scored most of her points on that side of the basket, either in the post or going left. She'll come off for a rest. Yeah, leading point scorer on nine. For the Spirit as Panousis works it down the other end. George looking for Nicholson. Kicks it back out. And the three attempt is offline from Rowe. Nicholson's savvy there. She's getting lots of defensive tension. They're trying to negate her coming off any screen action that's coming her way. She back cut then as a counter. Wilson working her way inside. Kicks it back out. Samuels. Samuels in South Australia as well. Deep. Three-point attempt. Hit the front of the rim. Two possessions to go in this second quarter. Can Bendy go in? Bendy go go into halftime with a little bit of momentum here. Can they come up with a stop and then get a conversion? Haven't quite found their range. Bendigo, two from 14 from three-point attempts yeah, so far tonight. They've struggled and they've had some wide open looks. Just haven't been able to get those to drop. And Sydney are three from nine down the other end. So timeout called. And this timeout is brought to you by Ford Aussie Hoops. Whether your little one is already shooting hoops in the backyard or simply looking to get out there and give basketball a go, the Ford Aussie Hoops program is the perfect way to kickstart their basketball journey, Ford Aussie Hoops, is the perfect introduction to the world of basketball for kids aged 5 to 10 years. So make sure you register today. Coach Guy Malloy will be diagramming what he wants executed here. They'll work, work clock here. Can they run Nicholson off some various screen action? Can they rim roll? They're, they're big down. They've had some success at that. Let's see what happens here. Maybe they get Kayla George and Nicholson in a two game. Bendigo, on the other hand, what are they going to do? Are they going to come out and do something different defensively? How are they going to de defend Nicholson? Do they show a bit of a zone and go man? Do they change up their ball screen defense? But critically, they need a, a stop to get into half time and readdress what it is that they need to, to do to claw this 13 point deficit back. They look like they just haven't settled. Yeah, I mean, they've really, you know, they can't hit perimeter shots. They seem a little bit stagnant offensively. Mm. You know, they've been effective when they've got rim rolls. As we see Kelly Wilson come up with a big steal. Exactly what you wanted, but... Dee Dee Richards a with the block. There against McGoldrick. That was fantastic. Panusa's here, a grind clock. Use a mid-ball pick. No, she'll wait to come off this six seconds-ish. Kayla George on the rim roll. Suckers a foul from Abby Wehrung. It's mismatched on that roll down. Low clock, they'd gone with a switch on the ball screen action. And she'll head to the line, Kayla George, for potentially her first points of the evening. You can make these two go into half time with a 15 point buffer. Excellent free throw shooter, Kayla George. Last year's MVP of the league. Fresh off a, yes, we're just about to say the same thing. Fresh off a WNBA championship as well. An outstanding 12 to 18 months really for Kayla, of course, becoming a new mum in that time as well. Timeout called here by Bendigo's coach, Coach Ken. He'll diagram up a play here, see if they can get a two or a three pointer to go into half time with a little, little bit of momentum, reduce this deficit. A touch. It's also great practice for their end of game scenarios when they may be down or they need a basket. This time out is brought to you by CTM Sport, the experts in travel management for sports teams. With CTM Sport, your team can leave the logistics to our travel experts, our travel specialists, and concentrate on their game as a part of the renowned CTM group. CTM Sport's travel management is designed to outperform the competition. So make sure you visit ctmsport.com.au today. 15 points the margin to the Flames at the moment as we approach half time. They've really shown a lot of intent, I think, from the opening tip off Sydney tonight. Everything that Spirit has so far thrown at them, they've responded to really well. Yeah, and their defensive intensity has been good. Coach 
Kerry Amor won't be happy with their turnover count back at 10 as Wei Rung gets downhill. Referees will wave that off. So it's half time here at Mildura Sporting Precinct. Uh, an ominous first half for the Sydney Flames. They lead the spirit by 15 as we take a look at some of the highlights to half. Offensively. So a lot for the Spirit to work towards at half time. A big second half to come for them. The Flames at the moment, they're up by 15 points at half time. We're going to take a quick break and don't go anywhere. We've got the second half coming up after this. momentum and power you've created to explode out on your first dribble. Okay, we've got two more. One. Sometimes as women, we look for perfection as opposed to execution. The work ethic is important when the players are 40 years younger than you. Yeah. yeah. Rapid. Why, thank you. Name? Um, <laughs> number? Um, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. Ah! Oh my <laughs> What? <laughs> Brush is it? <laughs> so, really? How do I. Where do I put my hand? Ah! Oh, <laughs> like what? Just <laughs> anything. Like, take the camera. Um. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what the? 
the f- <laughs> Bro, what the f- <laughs> What is your problem? I'm sorry, I got sit up. <laughs> What's your heart calling for? It's calling for connection. Are on a second chance journey to love. I'm so scared of finding love and losing love again. And they've given their kids complete control. I don't want you to get hurt. I'll pick up the pieces. All new My Mum, Your Dad. To love. <laughs> to love. Stream the latest episodes on Nine Now. Hello, Australia. Want to go for a ride? A summer heat wave has arrived. This is it. This is what you've been waiting for. Four spicy nights a week. It's open season. It's Love Island. Be afraid, boys. The power has shifted. <laughs> the girls are in charge. What the hell? What the hell? Surprise! The steamy villain era has arrived. New Love Island. New episodes drop Monday to Thursday on Nine Now. She throws it out of there, used her length earlier to create a steal and get on the rim. Um, she's been impressive, you know. 
the, the, be the beauty of this um, Sydney Flames team is as they evolve through this first, you know, three or four weeks of the season is she's going to get better and better. You know, she, it's her second game in the WNBL. She's had sort of, you know, the last 18 months or so in the WNBA, um, struggled with some hamstring injuries. She's not fully fit yet. You know, they're still trying to work her up to speed at this in terms of making sure her hamstring's right. So I think, you know, come Christmas time, she's going to be have, having more and more impact on the team. They'll then have... Um, Tess Madgen to add back into their lineup. Shanice Swain's also out. They'll have her coming back from stress stress fracture probably January. You know, this team's going to get better and better. For them, it's going to be about can they get some wins early in this first three or four weeks to make sure they stay in touch with that top group. And I think this team's going to steamroll home come the end of the season. And just how far do you think they can go? I mean, there's so much excitement around the roster that they have uh, built for, for this season. So many new faces, but quality inclusions. What, uh, what ceiling would you place on them? Yeah, look, I think they're definitely a top four team. You know, it's it's hard to predict who, who knows how injuries are going to play out for teams, how they're going to come together. It's going to take a while for, for Coach Malloy to embed his system with this team. You know, eight brand new players. We've talked about it. You know, he's worked with Kayla George for a long time. Um, Tess Madgen, obviously. Tess and Kayla George won a championship with Guy Malloy coaching with Melbourne Boomers a few years ago. So, um, you know, they've got, they've got a nice depth. Lauren Nicholson's a premier player. I mean, this team's, you know, they're, they're definitely a top four team. Um, anything can happen once you get top four team and you, and you come into March. Absolutely. You're doing pretty well when you bring in a league MVP and a championship winner. And, of course, George and, and Nicholson, who's uh, making her return uh, to the Flames. Last week in round one, Lauren, Lauren Nicholson, it was her first game back for the Flames since the 2016-17 WNBL season. So a welcome uh, homecoming for her last week. And uh, she scored a team-high 17 points in round one, six rebounds and six assists. So just came straight back into the side and um, doing what she does best. So a big second half to come for Bendigo and uh, an important few minutes to start this third quarter if they're going to get back into this contest, Carrie. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, they've, they've really got to try and stem the flow at, the, at that defensive end. Lauren Nicholson started to, to light it up a bit. Sydney really started to execute well. They got to tidy that end up, but and at this end, a bit more ball movement. You know, they got Stagan, other than Alicia Froling being able to score inside, they haven't been able to hit the broadside of the barn from the perimeter. Let's see if they can get a bit more ball movement and player movement as we see. Danny Richards put the ball on the deck for Sydney. Nice tidy defense by Bendigo, not to let her get downhill into the rim. Now get an opportunity early here. The spirit. We're all level at quarter time at 12 apiece. Sydney made a move in the second. Let's see how Bendigo can respond. Davis back to Frolling. And now to crack up. Shot clock ticking down. Got the shot off just in time. Bendigo clearly there. The message out of that halftime was we need to move the ball. We need to get player movement, get the ball through sets of hands. That they did. Offensive foul called here. Emma Clark, I think, may be her fourth personal. Coach Guy Malloy may choose to... It's starting to be a worry, isn't it? Sit her down. Mm. She did some nice things in that first half. Got to the rim a couple of times. It's going to be a play to watch for this season as well. Emma Clark. It's down the other one. Wow. It's the story of the night so far for the Bendigo Spirit. They just can't get baskets to drop. Not their inside. Drives to the rim. Not their perimeter threes. Clark to Nicholson. Lovely finish. Gosh, she's impressive, Nicholson. She can score in multiple ways. We see there with the little floater on her inside hand. She's great on the mid-range pull-up jump. Going left, she can shoot the three. She can get shots off with not much space. She's class. As Wei Rung launches the three. So good from that position, as we know. I just couldn't convert on that occasion. A chance for Bradley to Richards, who was good in that first half for the Flames to Nicholson, who was also great in that first half. George, looking to make her move, pops it up, gets it back. They still have possession, the Flames, kicks it back out to Richards. Bendigo Bench screaming for an air travel there. Kayla George had a nice little step through move, looped the shot short and caught it herself. Coach Kerry Aimer, Getting a little agitated on the sideline there. You can feel the, the importance of the next few minutes for his Bendigo Spirit team down 17. And just haven't got any flow 
at their scoring end. A chance for Davis for three. It pulls up short. Yeah, a lot of, lot of perimeter, perimeter movement there. That success had come from going inside to, to rim rollers or post-ups like Froling. Kayla George used her body. Can't get the long two to go. Wilson off to Kraka. Out of Froling. Share it around. Davis back to Wilson. Richards now in the full front down low. Prevented what? the ball going in to Alicia Froling. Nice little change up of defense by the Sydney Flames. They knew Froling was a focal point down low. And the counter-attack was prevent the ball going in full front. Nicholson. Can't convert down the other end. But Bendigo there. Now two from 16 from three-point range at the moment. This time they go inside to Froling. He draws contact. For Bendigo, you know, that's been about the only thing that's, that's actually worked for them consistently is find Alicia Froling down low. She does a great job there to rim run straight to the point of the rim. Richards then was making sure that that wasn't going to be an and one. She was going to take her hands off, send Alicia Froling to the free throw line. It's been hit and miss so far at the line tonight. She has three of seven from the free throw line. We talked about it earlier. She's a right-handed player. She had a major wrist injury where she couldn't flex her, her right-hand wrist back to 90 degrees. She took a season to just work her left hand. As we see, they're shooting a left-hand free throw that's rattled in for her. That'll give her some confidence. Saw her take a big deep breath before that second shot. Richards, lovely bounce pass to Nicholson. Great read. Lauren Nicholson, clearly Bendigo have said we need the ball out of her hand. She's getting denied on the wing in there. She makes a great back cut. Read, read the defensive pressure and DD found her on that cut. Bendigo to inbound. Kraka. Second attempt. And we'll go to the line. Endeavour's good. Missed the shot. They're playing. They're playing high energy, playing with intent. They just can't. It's almost like they're a little tight on these shots, but took the physicality, took the second physicality, and that converted it to the free throw line for her. So Bendigo, six from 12 at the line tonight. Conversely, Sydney, 10 from 11. Yeah, 50% from the free throw line is well below par. These are some important shots from Kraka. Just to chip away at that lead, it was 17. 17 feels very close to 20 when you're down by that much. 13 points, you feel like you're in touch. It's funny what that, th that little three-point difference between 14 and 17 feels like when you're on the floor. Clark has a whistle. George and Werung involved. What way is it going to go? It's going to go MVP's way. It generally does. If there's star talent out there and other talent, I'm going to say nine times out of ten, the star talent gets the call. <laughs> Kayla well, George, well deserved, great. do you think? If you're, that, if, if you're a star no, talent? I think you've know? probably earned the right. <laughs> it feels a little frustrating if you're not that star talent, Correct. however. <laughs> Would agree with that. Here is George. Off the glass, wonderful. Well executed two game there in the ball screen. Rolls to the short corner, likes to catch that and then can play on the move. Classic Kayla George. Plays on the other side of the rim. Davis to Werong to Kraka. Sydney Flames defensively are doing a great job. Well, she converts. Wow. That's a big call. Momentum swinger. We've gone from 17 down. They're back in touch. It's back to 12. And you saw some energy from the spirit as well. Let's take another look. Yeah, they got caught on that. Oh. Bit of mis miscommunication on the ball screen action. Three points counted. And another foul against Clark.
So Margin, all of a sudden, they're getting back into this one. Bendigo, but that was an opportunity gone begging. Big defensive board. Kayla George. Oh, referees that aren't giving her that call. Alicia Froling's going to get that call going her way. A little bit of momentum, you sense, swung back towards the Bendigo spirit here. Wilson. People were on. He's driving. We'll get it back. Bradley got a hand in there. Sydney's defensive intensity has gone up a notch. They're playing physical defensively. They're in lanes. No easy shots for the Bendigo Spirit. Most shots are under duress. Credit to the Sydney Flames defense. Big offensive set here. What have the Bendigo Spirit got on their side out of bounds? So a bit of confusion out there. It is a Bendigo ball. Low clock, that's what it is. Davis bounces off the rim. Big offensive board, Alicia Froling. And a big three. Massive three-point <laughs> shot. Wow, she swung the momentum for the Bendigo spirit in this last 30 seconds. And kind of certainly lifted a notch, have the spirit. And you can see their body language, Carrie. They've really turned it around, come out after half time, and you can tell that they have just increased the energy a little bit. Yes, yeah, certainly in these last three minutes. The first two minutes, that was still a little, little tentative, but these last three minutes, you know, it's amazing what energy comes from a couple of big made three-point shots when you haven't been able to hit from there. Ali Wilson. Some staggered screen action here into a seam pick and roll. Wayrun can't take that. Back to the hot hand, but it's gone inside to Davis and she converts. Great team play. Coach will be happy with that. Executed the play, got the ball through sets of hands, ran what they wanted to. A little old school action. Penusis for the Flames. Less than five minutes to go on the third. She sees her opportunity for a three and makes it count. That says you got the momentum. We're swinging it back our way. She's come up big with a couple of three-point shots when the Sydney Flames have needed it. has Penusis. Ali Wilson, that's a big three as well. They're all starting to drop it now. Points are starting to flow at either end of the court. Yeah, the last three three-point attempts have dropped for the Bendigo Spirit. Swinging their percentage the right way. Still a lowly 16% from the three-point line, and that's having made the last three of their three-point attempts. George. Bendigo ball. It's all coming up the Spirit's way at the moment. Trying to eat away at this lead. Davis adds another two. Now they got the, you know, they got a vibe for it. You know, going to Davis down low. Sydney Flames will need to do something about that with her. Scored the same way twice on the low block. Hurst getting involved to George. Signature Kayla George. That's a move you see over and over from her. Almost comes up with the defensive play at the other end. It's experience for you right there. You know, scores at one end, makes a defensive play at the other on the back of that. And we're certainly seeing the Kayla George we know in round two. Had another week of practice with her new Sydney Flames outfit. Crocker. Now to Wilson from long range, another one! Hot hand, Wilson. I could barely shoot a three in the first half. Now in the third. They have really lifted the spirit. It's back to six points. We go from 17 down to six down in the space of a few minutes. Start hitting a few primitive shots. Give you some energy. Look at it, look at how active they are now defensively. George can't make that three over the big Davis hand. They win another rebound. Ali Wilson. Takes it down the floor. Wearung. 
Looks inside. Out to McGoldrick. Now to Werung. Shot clock. Down to five. We should take Davis a chance. Davis on the rim roll with the switch. She had Panousis on it, but Werung comes to the party. And this game has come alive in Mildura. Back to four points the margin after Bendigo were down by 17 earlier in the quarter. What a turnaround it has been, and they are full of confidence at the moment. Yeah, Coach Malloy wants to talk it over. They'll make some adjustments now. They've got to get a tighter hand on the three now that Bendigo have got their eye in. Wilson's got her eye in. Weirung's got her eye in. Krakow's got her eye in. A timeout call with 2.12 on the clock in the third quarter. And this timeout brought to you by your local Ford dealer, proudly supporting community basketball in Australia. And we are in Mildura tonight. And the local fans are getting their money's worth because this game has come alive in this third quarter. The Spirits were down by 15 at half time, down by as much as 17 during the quarter. And now they've made their move, Carry Graf. And all of a sudden, the pressure's back on the flames. Yeah, that it is, you know. And it, it really was just the swing of we started to make our perimeter shots. That gave him some energy. That and a couple of inside touches down low from, from Davis on that. You know, made a couple of nice little interior passes to her and she got to finish. And, you know, at 17, it was looking looking dicey. You know, two minutes into that third quarter, it could have easily blown out to 25. Instead, here they are, energised now with their eye in from the three-point line, feeling like they've got this game back on the terms they want it to. Let's see, they wanted it to. Let's see if uh, the Sydney Flames, what answer have they got? So at one stage, Bendigo were two from 16 from three points. After that, in the last few minutes, three from four. And that's how quickly things can change. Absolutely. Sydney with possession to George. Always stands up when a team needs it. When you need a bucket, go to your MVP. Big Pretty play. simple strategy, isn't it? Yeah, got her in. You know, she loves that short corner from a little pick and pop. Cracker. Had an opportunity. Danny Richards with a good block out. She's been impressive on the boards. Sydney Flames in her second game in the WNBL. Panousas with the baseline drive. Good ball movement from Sydney. And Hurst converts a long range three. Both teams feeling it from three-point range. Her first points of the evening. Coach Guy Malloy, interesting. It's, it's a tight game. He's happy to go with the, the bench, see what they can do. So one minute 21 left on the clock. Coach Karayama wanted to halt that momentum quickly. They'd got it right back. He didn't want that lead to get out again, see if he can hold the momentum for his team, see what they can execute here. And they've restored a nine-point advantage after Bendigo got to within four. And Dede Dede Kayla Richards. George, and she'll yep. push it out for you again. Came up with a couple of big baskets, well executed. And you made a good point earlier about Dee Dee Richards, who's approaching a double. She's on eight points and nine rebounds, eight of those defensive. Yeah, she does the little things, you know, she's, she can get amongst it. She's, she uses her length. We saw her early on in the quarter. Alicia Froling was damaging for the Bendigo Spirit. She made a couple of defensive adjust, adjustments, fronted her. She's come up with some big steals, some big shot blocks at, at critical moments. She's been impressive. 24-year-old out of Houston. A couple of seasons in the WNBA with New York. You know, first WNBL season for Sydney. Who just really want to settle here as we head into the three-quarter time break. Bendigo, meanwhile, are chasing down this deficit. They've got some hunger about them. There's a little more pep in the Bendigo spirit step offensively. But the woman we just spoke about. On cue, Dee Dee Richards, length on the rim. Oh, almost. Can't get it to go. Almost gets her O-board. Kelly Wilson back into the action for the Spirit. Less than a minute to go now in the third. Three-position game here to run out the third quarter. 
Can the Bendigo Spirit get two good offensive looks and a defensive stop? Wilson. Wow. Great work. Fantastic. Tough on her left hand. Took the physicality. Left hand scoop. Seven points of difference. Richards to Panousis. Looking back for Richards, but they turned it over. Bendigo back the other way. Score and a stop. Can they get another score here? Play the last shot. Shot clock and game clock almost in sync. Throwing everything at Sydney at the moment, who are holding up well as Davis gets Big. it back, finishes mm. it off. Massive offensive board and finish. And there you go. Bendigo Spirit. We said it. There was a three possession. Could they get two scores and a stop? That they did. It's back to five points. And we have a game on our hands. Friday Night Hoops in Mildura. Don't go anywhere because we... And the Flames lost to Perth on the road. So looking for their first win of the new season in the Signet WNBL competition. The Flames to kick us off in the fourth. Here's Bradley. Off to Clark. Now swing it across. A good look for three. It bounces off the rim. She's wide open. She was happy to take that one. They had good play movement, decent ball movement. Ali Wilson. Rim roll. Couldn't get the ball to Davis, but Wilson puts her head down. Can't find the finish. Couple of misses early to each side. Here's Richards, who's really growing in confidence with every minute she's playing in this competition and converts. Her eyes lit up. She saw it was, she was mismatched. Ruth Davis had her. Davis was keeping good space. Dini pulls up. Happy to take the mid-range two, converts it for the Flames. Up to 10 points now, Richards. Bendigo out to the tally down the other end through Crocker. She's been impressive. She's come up with big buckets when they need it. We saw her light it up in that third quarter with some back-to-back -back three pointers. Puts it on the deck then, goes hard left. It's Dee Dee Richards again with a step through, that Euro. Look at that athleticism. She's starting to feel comfortable. With this new team, the Sydney Flames, Davis inside, maximising her size, getting her close to the rim. Effective left-hand finish. And points are starting to flow now at either end of the floor. Bradley. Commentator's curse, I think, got her then. <laughs> Bendigo now happy to execute. Kelly Wilson barking the 
The issues on the rim roll again is Davis. Outstanding from Crocker. Wow. She's come a light. Been consistent all game for this Bendigo Spirit team that are right in touch here. We've got a two-point ball game, 7.45 to play. George getting in on the action. You need a bucket, you know where to go. Go to your superstar. Four points of difference. Ali Wilson open for the three. Drains another. Wow. She's three of three on her last three attempts from the three-point line. As Bradley makes a move. Back giving it to George, now to Nicholson, who shares it with George. The two stars combining for the Flames. Big Couldn't have the board. finish, but a big rebound from Clark. She also is a little offline. A little fatigue, maybe shots falling short. Great offensive board, Emma Clark couldn't convert it. Both teams desperate to get in the win column for this 2023-24 WNBL season. Round two, crack up. Out to Wilson, back to Crocker. We should go for it again. Almost. Good hustle. IQ from Kelly Wilson. She knew Krakow had hit the hit the first hit hit one recently. She hot, had the hot hand. A couple of subs here now for the Bendigo Spirit. Wilson takes a breather. As does. McGoldrick, both take a seat. Here is Wilson. I look to get it inside again. Out of the big inside presence, of, that is Ruth Davis. Need to put a shot up. The shot clock was ticking down, so some good defense from the Flames. One point the margin. What a game this has turned into be. Started off a little, a little rusty. A bit of an arm wrestle as the two sides are feeling each other out in the beginning, but it has come alive in the second half. We've got a great finish coming up. Clark negates that ball screen, goes baseline drive, spits it out. Or oh, a fumble. Kelly from Wilson. Bradley. Pressure D. It'll be a Sydney ball. Benigo Spirit Bench are on their feet, urging their teammates to stick with the intensity. See Kelsey Griffin there. I'm sure she'd much rather be on the floor. Great hustle by the veteran Kelly Wilson. We said earlier, she played 431 games in the WNBL. All-time leader in games played. Third all-time in assists. Three-time WNBL championship player. And still has the hunger, the drive. It's such a, a competitive athlete. So lucky to have her. Sydney to inbound. Great physical condition. Well-executed player to the side out of bounds. Emma Clark on the back cut. Wide open on the rim. The skipper finds her. Here's Frolling working on Richards to Wilson. A little more pace to... in their half-court offense. Now the Bendigo Spirit. Swinging it across to Weirung. Finally finds a finish, Weirung. No penetration. She's been in the lane a lot. Hasn't been able to get him to drop. Finds that one. Finished on the left hand. Back to a point, the difference. Oh, Nicholson. that ball screen with Nicholson. Not letting her take, take the ball screen. George will go herself. Just a little too strong. Richards, though, mops it up. They'll get another opportunity, swinging it across to Clark from the corner. Sydney's three-point shots have dried up a little bit in this fourth quarter. It's amazing, but a little bit of pressure does carry Graf. Yep, that 17-point lead that they had in the third corners dwindled away to one. George to Nicholson working the baseline and draws, draws the contact, so she's off to the line. Might be 
down Froling. And she is shooting at 100% from the line tonight. Six from six. Yeah, Nicholson's just savvy. She gets such tight defensive attention too. She's a, she's a hard matchup. She uses screen action well. She's got multiple ways to score. She's persistent. She doesn't quit. She can make big shots. Come on, Elton. McSpadden off to Nicholson. Great find. Nicholson will go to the line. Great feed. Great cut. Got for a, a, a brand new team together. They're executing offense pretty well. They're finding each other. Some high IQ players on this Sydney Flames team. Some great experience. And I'll be happy just to take their time here and, and settle down a little bit. The Flames. Spirit have the momentum. Needs some important shots. I spoke about earlier, great free throw shooter, Nicholson. 80%. Great technique. She's 100% tonight. A little bit of breathing room for the Sydney Flames. Kraka to Ali Wilson. Pulls up for the two. George underneath. So less than five minutes to go here, Carrie. Happy to execute here, see if they can get some rim roll action. McSpadden on the point of the rim after that roll down. Clark goes for it. That's a big three to the Flames. Massive. Came off a little brush ball screen from Kayla George. Had her feet set, wide open three. Massive shot. Coach Carrie Emma wants to talk it over. Hold, hold the momentum. It's a timeout called. Four minutes and seven seconds left on the clock. This timeout is brought to you by the WNBL. And don't forget the official WNBL app is finally here. Make sure you do not miss a minute of the action this season. For all your live scores, highlights, all your player and team info as well, and plenty more, download the free WNBL app today. As the Madura fans getting involved and making their voices heard. Great crowd in tonight and witnessing a great game of basketball. Sydney with a six-point lead thanks to a big three from Emma Clark just to give them a little bit of breathing space. Carrie Graffin, as the minutes and seconds continue to tick down, the spirit that they're giving everything out there, that they're fighting, they're scrapping harder. The points are starting to flow, but Sydney are just holding on to that lead. Yeah, they find, I mean, that's the thing, you know, Sydney find a way to get a shot when you, you've got to spend so much time working out how you're going to defend Kayla George and Lauren Nicholson, you know, and that is what got Emma Clark that wide open three point shot. They were so concerned about what they were going to do and how, how they were going to communicate a potential switch or a pop from Kayla George. It, it gave Emma Clark a few seconds to get that wide open three. But this is a ball game, it's had momentum swings, it's had big margins. And it's back to a two-point ball game. Oh, sorry, a, a two-possession game. Six down. Kraka, another three. She has been impressive for the Bendigo spirit. That's a third. And she's up to 14 points for the spirit. And they've got possession again. Big turnover. Ali Wilson. Swings it across to Kelly Wilson. Couldn't punish Sydney then. They had a long show in that ball screen action. It took McSpadden a fair while to get back to Ruth Davies. It was sitting on the on the point of the rim. But their ball pressure on the perimeter prevented it from going in, allowed it to catch up. Defense. Three points Defense. the margin, three minutes left on the clock. So another twist in his tail to come. What does Sydney do here? Now with George on the back cut. Panousis at the top of the arc. Big. Great pull shot. Up jumper. That was important for the Flames. Really composed then. Panousis saw she had some space. It's Kelly Wilson, the veteran, getting it back in the hot hand. Lovely put back. 
from Davis. Yeah, she's, effect she's effective close to the rim, you know, as a rim roller, and you're there for putbacks when someone penetrates. Clark swings it out to George. And that is classic Kayla George. Wow. Froling did a great job to take away the three, force Kayla George to put the ball on the floor. But boy, you know, big time player comes up with a big time shot, a big time moment for her team. Back out to a five point advantage. Crocker to Wilson inside. Davis, great what? defense. Pulls up short. Interesting here. Big call. George and Froling, arms locked up. Both trying to sucker a call from the referees. Some great post play there by the bigs. Kayla George, the master at locking up an arm. It's not me, referee. It's not me. <laughs> the veterans know how to use their bodies within the context of the rules. They're savvy. Couldn't quite get away with that on that occasion. So... These are important few moments for Bendigo. They have to make their move. Switching on the ball screen action. They don't go to it. Crocker. Goes for it. But couldn't find the bottom of the net. Interesting then. Alicia Froling. They, they switched on the ball screen. She was down low. She had Panousis on her back. Maybe that was where they, the ball needed to go. However, it didn't. With Sydney back with the ball. Five up, a minute and a half to play. And Nicholson adds to her tally. So the big stars getting involved for the Flames in this last quarter. Money every time. Lauren Nicholson on her left, pull up mid-range. She is the best at that in the league, in my mind. Time out here. Coaches want to talk it over. And they execute to get a great look. Can they come up with defensive stops? Are they making adjustment on their ball screen defense? Where do they need rotations from? It's all the chess game now. Certainly is. So we're all square at quarter time, 12 apiece. Sydney up by 15 at half time. Benigo made their move in the third. They trailed by five at three quarter time. They got within a point twice in this last quarter, but Sydney have maintained a seven point advantage as we tick down towards full time. So Bendigo on screen at the moment. They need to find a spark. They've, like I said, they've shown a lot of spirit in this second half and have thrown everything at the flames. Do they have one more effort left in them, Carrie Graff? Yeah, look, if they can get a bucket on this execution, let's see what the coach has diagrammed up. So they come off some sort of ball screen action and rim roll. Davis down. She's been effective when she's got down low. Can they attack a switch if they force a switch low on the shot clock on the ball screen action? Allie Wilson's been hot from the three-point line. Do they engage in her in some action? Yes, they do. Let's run her off a couple of picks to the mid-pick and roll with a rim roll down. They need this bend to go. And Allie Wilson delivers. Well executed. Got a great basket. Back yep. to five. They work it around the arc, Nicholson to Panousis. And now George, a cool head out to Richards, who's been absolutely fantastic for the Flames. Pulls up short, but gets it back. Massive offensive rebound, Dee Dee Richards. Ball screen action up top. Panousis fires off the rim. They've got to go, the spirit. Wilson. They need a two or three here. It's a two possession game. They've got to get a shot quick. Inside to Davis. Foul called. Might be on the baseline, on the dribble. Smart foul. Kayla George fouls it before she gets into a shooting action. Veteran, high IQ play, Kayla George. Again, comes up with big plays, not just at the offensive end. That's why she was MVP last year. WNBL MVP, 22-23. It's the kind of player that every team would love to have on their side. Playing an important role for a new team, the Flames. Crocker! Can't seize the moment. Great look. 
Now they're going to try and foul it. Well, they're going to let it run out. Panousis to Richards. Nicholson may have fouled. Yeah, if they were going to foul, they needed to foul much earlier, so they had time on the clock. They got they had fouls to give. They need to be playing hard on the ball, see if they could shake loose a steal. If not, get, get the foul can in, get the clock stopped. Put pressure on the free throw shooters. So it might be a bit beyond them now. So we are going to have a timeout. 8.9 seconds left on the clock. What a game this has turned out to be, Cary Graff. It uh, might be a little... Too little, too late, you think, for the spirit? I think so. I think that foul needed to come much sooner so they had more, more clock to, to put pressure on the, on the free throw attempts here, then advance the ball and get some shots. But we always say that it's not over till it's over. It's, uh, you know, they're down two shots here. It's a Sydney Flame possession. Let's see what Sydney do. I think they'll just get the ball in the hands of their best shooter, take the foul and take the free throws. I think nine seconds... A touch under nine seconds just isn't quite enough time with the for the Bendigo Spirit. Five points down. That's they need a two and a three, and they don't have possession right now. And the new recruits really showing their worth tonight. Lauren Nicholson's been fantastic. Kayla George, as you mentioned, just always knows the, the right thing to do at the right moment and bobs up when she needs to. Yeah, they've been impressive. They're two stars, and Dee Dee Richards in her second game has certainly shown improvement from game one. She's been all over the all over the court, defensively impressive, oh, rebounding impressive. Twelve rebounds, twelve points for Dee Dee Richards tonight. Sydney ball. They'll be content just to see the seconds tick down the flames. They will, and this is where you know Bendigo weren't clock aware. Earlier on, they you know wasted 10 seconds in not fouling. They haven't yet sent Sydney to the free throw line because they had fouls to give. It's taken three fouls to now get to the free throw line. Two shots to come for Sydney. Look, she makes these two. It's definitely done. I'm going to say I don't think Bendigo can win the ball game from here. First free throws coming up for Clark. Time on the clock. Now two threes with six seconds to go. Takes a deep breath. One from two. And then launch a three. And then try and get a steal. It's not going to happen. They've been gallant, the Bendigo spirit. They threw everything at Sydney in the second half. But the Flames stood up. Their big recruits played an important role tonight. They get their first win of the 2023-24 Signet WNBL season. They beat the spirit by... Add into the mix, but um, you know, what a game. Certainly that 13 quarter, a 17 point deficit for the Bendigo Spirit. They claw back to within a, within a point. 
Uh, they just couldn't get over the line in that, that last minute or two for some big plays. I mean, the Sydney Flames team had to come up with some big plays. We saw Kayla George come up with some big offensive plays and defensive plays, and that's what veteran start players do. Absolutely, and I guess as for, for Bendigo, for them, I mean, they, they couldn't take their chances early. And, and when you look at their first couple of games, they went down to Townsville, obviously coming off a championship and then coming up against Sydney, which have put together, as we've mentioned, one of the best rosters in the league. So as much as they would be disappointed that they haven't found that groove yet and they're still turning the ball over a little bit too much and not taking their chances, I mean, they've come up against two really great sides in the opening two rounds. So a lot of, a lot to take out for them. Yeah, absolutely. And they've been without Kelsey Griffin. You know, you can't, you can't underestimate the impact that has when you've got another, you know... Uh, former MVP of the league and star star athlete that adds to your group in so many ways. I think coach Kerry Ammer will be really happy with their turnover count in that second half. They had 10 turnovers to half time, finished the game with two. That allowed them to have more possession and get that, that you know, when they got their three-point shot rolling in that third quarter, that got them right back in the game to claw that deficit back, as we said. But look, that turned into a pretty good pretty good contest. That was a great second half of basketball to watch. It had, it had everything. It had momentum swings. It had some big defensive plays and it had shooters that got red hot from the three-point line. Absolutely. One of them, uh, Merrin Cracker, as we've mentioned throughout the call, one of the recruits uh, for Bendigo. She really got going. She was a highlight for them today. Ali Wilson, uh, 13, she really stood up when, when she needed to. Three from five from, from three-point range as well. So definitely a, a couple of players who were, who were starting to build some momentum. And uh, as we take a look at uh, some more highlights from tonight's game, what a game it was. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about her earlier. Dee Dee Richards showed some of her off offensive wares. You know, she's we're impressed with her athleticism, her ability to get in the lanes and make steals, get some block shots, but come up with possessions. You know, she does all the hard work, little things, which which isn't always the way when you bring in US imports. You know, often they're go-to scorers, but, you know, she brings another dimension to the Sydney Flames roster, and I think we're going to see her grow and grow and, and really be an important cog to the Sydney Flames wheel. Certainly a lot to like for Bendigo moving forward as to the Flames. And if this contest is anything to go by, Carrie, I think we've got a really another fantastic season of WNBL basketball to come our way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think this, the, the Sydney Flames team are going to be a bit of a slow burn early. They'll be really happy to get this first win to, to make sure they stay in touch with that, that top four. I think there's no question they're a top four team. They'll get better as the season goes along and they've got more talent to add in. Tess Magin to come back, back in. Shanice Swain to come back in off a, a stress fracture. Um, you know, they're going to get better and better and you'd imagine me playing pretty good hoop come the end of the season. Bendigo, having said that too, they've, you know, a core group that have been together. They've got add Kelsey Griffin back in. Um, you know, for them, it'll be about trying to find a couple of wins early so that, you know, it, it keeps that confidence going, you know. But they've had, they've had two, as you say, two big opponents straight up last year's championship mm -hmm. team a team that you say would be a championship contender on paper you know on paper's one thing can you convert it into something else but um you know they won't be unhappy with that performance they'll be unhappy with parts but they won't be you know as disappointed they may have been had that blown out they could have easily blown out to 2025 um, so, you know, credit to them to claw their way back into that game. Absolutely. They were 17 points down at one stage during that third quarter before making their run. So a great contest to kick us off. Friday Night Hoops, round two of the Signet WNBL season. These are the games to come, Carrie Graff. The action continues across your screens over the weekend. Uh, what games stand out for you? Um, looking at Sydney v Melbourne on Sunday, that looks like to be a ripper. That, yeah, that will, you know, Guy Malloy against his, his, his old team that he's... he's taking a couple of Melbourne players with him in Kayla George and Tess Magin. That'll, there'll be some heat in that one, I would say. Um, look, Townsville Southside tomorrow night, that's going to be fun to call. You know, Townsville are, are on fire, pardon the pun. Southside are coming off a confidence boost win over um, over the UC Caps on Wednesday night. They're, they're huge. They're massive. You know, they're 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6 6 That's going to that's be a hell of a contest. Look, all of these, Perth, Adelaide, I mean, you know, the game's... I think we're going to see quality basketball. You know, these these six teams are going to play much better than, than they did in round one. They've had a couple of games under their belt. All of these games are going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. So a great start to the Signet WNBL season. And we had a ripper Friday night contest in Mildura to kick off round two. Plenty more action to come over the weekend. Uh, but for now, it is the Sydney Flames who win their first game of the season. They get on the winner's list. They had to do it the tough way. Bendigo threw everything at them. But Sydney come away with a six-point win. Thanks for your company.